Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, from Minecraft Magic. If you saw last week's episode, you will know how to set up your enchantment and your potion stations, ready to get some magic going. And today, we're going to start with two enchantments and two potions that are relatively easy and simple to get going right at the beginning of the game. So let's crack on. Before we talk about the potions themselves, I want to talk about additives to potions. The additives to potions are things that you can put in your potion that make your potions even better, or in some cases, even worse. And there are basically four primary additives. You've got glowstone dust, which increases the power of the potion. You've got redstone dust, which increases the duration of the potion. And you've got gunpowder, which turns the potion into a splash potion, which basically means you can lob it at someone or yourself, and they will get the effects of that potion. The fourth one is dragon's breath, and that can create a lingering potion, which means the splash potion stays where it is as a cloud of smoky goodness or indeed smoky badness for a longer time. That's a bit harder to come by, and we'll talk about that in a later episode. My brewing stand is primed and ready with three awkward potions. Remember, always, always put three awkward potions in the bottom or three bottles of water in the bottom because it only takes one ingredient at the top to create three, two or one potions. Irrelevant. It does not matter. Raining doesn't make potion making any better. It just makes you a little bit more moist. But anyway, we are going to crack on with two really easy and simple potions you've already got blaze powder because you went to the nether to make your brewing stand and sugar you've already got that because you got sugar cane to make the books to make your enchantment setup if you've not seen how to do that last week's episode explains it beautifully the same as last week's episode also explains how to make an awkward potion so to make the first potion which is a potion of swiftness you need to use just one bit of sugar Pop one bit of sugar in the top of the brewing stand and you get this bubbling effect like you do when your any brew is going and the line goes down and you can see the progress arrow. Once that's complete, you are going to have some potions of swiftness. And there you go, potions of swiftness and you can see the colour has changed. These give you the speed effect for three minutes. If I take those out, you can see speed effect for three minutes, which means if I drink that, we're just going to have a bit of a play. Up in the top right hand corner of my screen, I have now got speed, which means I'm just walking. This is not me running, this is me walking. It has increased my speed by 20%. If I then sprint, that increases my sprint speed by 20%. It is really useful. And what it also does is it increases your jumping distance by 20%. You can see that 20% seems to be the key number right here. Okay, tangent cam, if you want to get rid of any effect, whether it is potion or otherwise, you can do it by milking a cow. Get yourself an empty bucket and right click on a cow. They don't even have to be looking at you. And you will get a strange noise and a bucket of milk. And that bucket of milk will remove any status effect if you drink it. Notice up in the right hand side, I've still got that status effect. Drink the milk that state's effects have gone and you're left with an empty bucket. That is a really good way of getting rid of effects like poison or some things that you don't want on you. Now, I talked about using additives and redstone is one of those additives. If we shove a redstone in the top of this, you can see it bubbles. You know it works if it's bubbling. If it doesn't work, it won't bubble and you know you've not got a good combination. It's a bit like cooking. But if you put redstone at the top, we're gonna increase this potion of swiftness from a three minute potion of swiftness into an eight minute potion of swiftness. You can see there that will last for a lot, lot longer. And always, if you can, potions are good to have an extended shelf life. It doesn't matter if you've still got them. You don't have to run faster. There's very few times that you're gonna want your potion to only last the standard amount. So always have a ready stack of redstone ready to get these things really juicing up. A quick word of warning, if you want to use glowstone dust as an additive to get a stronger potion, this will give you speed too. Don't use an extended potion, that is just greedy. The game doesn't do greed, it won't let you bubble up a 8 minute long speed 2 potion, I'm afraid. That is not how it works. You have to use these speeds. So let me just demonstrate what this will give to you at the moment. This has speed one effect on it, these potions of swiftness, but it is the standard entry level potion, 3 minutes pop that in there, all of a sudden the bubbles do start, which is brilliant. The line comes down and momentarily we will have a speed two effect available to us. 
and there we go. The potion looks exactly the same, but you can see here, speed two. Now speed two gives us 40% increase. So I'm just gonna drink this one up and I'm gonna show you what this does. I've now got the effect of speed two in me. I'm just gonna walk. This is me walking. This is not me sprinting. This is me walking. If I then want to sprint, that's me sprinting. That's mad. And then 40% longer jumps as well. Look at this. Boom! It's brilliant. Speed 2 is a superb potion as long as you don't want to be doing tiny little steps because if you do, you're in the wrong place. And just for the record, don't you be thinking you can be a hacker and put the glowstone in now you've got the Speed 2 potion. The game's smarter than that. So we have talked about being the fastest on the planet. Now let's talk about being the strongest on the planet with a potion of strength. We've got, again, three awkward potions in the bottom here. We're going to put one little bit of blaze powder in the top. We went and got blaze powder from the blaze rods that we got from the nether in the last episode. Very, very simple. Now what this potion of strength is going to do is increase your melee attack. Now that's not just a melee attack if you're pl uh, hitting other players. This is at any hand-to-hand -hand combat that you have with any mob. And you can see the awkward potion turns into a potion of strength, a three minute potion of strength. Similarly, you can grab yourself some redstone and you can put your potion into here and pop a bit of redstone and that will increase that three minutes up to a duration of eight minutes. No change in what it looks like, but the strength is now an eight minute potion of strength. Now let's go and have a play with this. I'm gonna give myself this strength effect. You can see in my top right, there is a sword with a little flashy thing. Apparently that means strength. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spawn in a creeper just over here. It's not gonna light the look of me very much as soon as it sees me, but I'm then gonna hit it with my strength. You can see five hearts whacked off of that, two hits, and we are good to go. That is how to use a potion of strength, but we can make it better. Just like the potion of speed, we can give glowstone dust to our potion of strength, but only the entry level potion. No point in trying to put it on the eight minute potion, just stick it on the three minute one. Glowstone in the top, and that is gonna give us a potion that will give us the state of effect strength two. Now, rather than it being three hearts of additional damage that our melee attack will do now, it will give us six hearts, which makes us basically invincible. And then you go strength two, you only get a minute and a half because you can't really be a god for longer than that. We're going to do exactly the same test and I'm just gonna hit, I'm not gonna do any jump attacks on this one. I'm just gonna hit the creeper with standard attack. Let's get this strength two inside. The icon on the top right is exactly the same. Let's pop the creeper down there. It's seen me already. Here it comes and I'm just going to bash it. That hit for six hearts there. And there we go. No jumping up and down there for hitting the creeper. It was just a standard bash. We have given it extra damage as a result of that strength potion. Enchanting time now. We've got two really, really great enchantments. The first one we're going to talk about is an enchantment that I think is essential in a survival game, and that is efficiency. Now, efficiency can be added to a spade, a pick, or an axe in an enchantment table because they are primary items. You can also add it to shears, but not in an enchantment table. You have to use an enchanted book to be able to put efficiency onto shears. However, let's have a go with these picks here. So I'm gonna put some lapis into there and I'm gonna take this diamond pickaxe. There is a relatively high chance that you are gonna get efficiency on a pickaxe. It has a high weight value. The lower the weight value, the less likely it is to happen. This has a weight of 30, which is the biggest weight value you can actually get. So if I put a diamond pickaxe in there, I can get efficiency two, efficiency two there, or efficiency four. Now I've not got enough levels at the moment to be able to get efficiency four, but I can still get efficiency two. So let's pop that one back. I'll have that. And then we got all these other five that we could do as well. We also got there, you'll notice, unbreaking as a little bit of a bonus. Now, as you would have seen in the first episode, you can also add enchantments onto items using an anvil. I've got an efficiency one, efficiency two, efficiency three, efficiency four, and efficiency five book here. And I'm gonna make one of each of these diamonds without any additional effects whatsoever. So this becomes an efficiency one diamond pickaxe. I'm gonna make one of each and then we're gonna have a play. 
Now, the way efficiency works is it adds a multiplier onto the speed at which you can mine out a block. If you imagine hitting a block out with your fist as being one, a diamond pickaxe, just without any enchantments, gives you a multiplier of eight. So a diamond pickaxe will knock out a cobblestone block, for example, eight times faster than if you try and do it with your fist. Now, efficiency adds on more to that multiplier. For each efficiency level, it will add the square of that level plus one more. So efficiency one, you square one, which is one, and then add one, which is another one. So you add two to the eight of the diamond to create 10. So it becomes 10 times faster than hitting it out with your fist. If you then put that to efficiency five, that's five squared, 25, plus one equals 26. Add that to the eight of the diamond pickaxe, you get 34 times faster with efficiency five diamond pick than it would be with your fist. So I'm gonna try a little ramshackle test. We have got five rows of cobble here and we're gonna see how long it takes us to mine out each row of cobble successively using each pickaxe. First off, efficiency one. When I start hitting this with the pickaxe, I'm going to hit the start on my stopwatch. If I can get one on the screen, I will do. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to in editing, we shall see, but three, two, one, go. That took 3.38 seconds. That's actually not too bad. So come down and we'll do efficiency two. If I get ready for the efficiency two and we're gonna start in three, two, one, go. That was 2.8 seconds, a little bit quicker. If we come on with efficiency three, doing exactly the same thing again. Three, two, one, go. That was 2.5 seconds. So we're getting progressively quicker and you'll notice it's not linear. We're not getting the same amount quicker every time. We're getting better quicker as we continue. Three, two, one, go. That was 2.1 seconds. And then finally, efficiency five. There we go, are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Wow, that was 1.5 seconds, really fast. If you were to have a haste beacon on at the same time, you would get a 20% increase in speed for each efficiency level. So for efficiency five, that's a 100% increase. It would double that amount of time. We would have mined those three blocks out in three quarters of a second. It's effectively insta mining and it's much, much faster than if you're in creative. And the second enchantment is complementary to efficiency. And we're gonna talk about fortune. Fortune is, I would consider to be an essential tool to have in your pick when you go mining, especially when you go mining for diamonds. And I will explain why in just a moment. Dead easy, you can put this on a pick, an ax, or a spade, very much like you can with the efficiency. However, you can't put it onto shears using a book the same way as you can efficiency. If I bring this diamond pickaxe, we've got a lesser chance of getting fortune than we do with efficiency. So we may not get something, or we've got efficiency there, efficiency there, and efficiency four there. Let's click that and see what it gives us. See, it didn't give us the fortune. I'm not massively surprised because you only get fortune about one in four enchantments. However, you can get yourself fortune by using a fortune book. Fortune has three levels. This is a fortune three book. That gives me a fortune three pickaxe. This fella is very important to me. Now here is the sciencey bit, so bear with me. What fortune does, depending on its level, is it increases the amount of stuff you get from blocks that drop stuff when you mine them out. So ores, trees, plants like carrots and melons, gravel or rarer blocks like glowstone and sea lanterns that drop prismarine and glowstone dust. So for plants and redstone and glowstone and sea lanterns, it increases the maximum number of things that you drop by one per level. So fortune three will increase the number of drops by three. In gravel, the percentage chance of dropping a flint is increased quite quickly, 14% for one, 25% for level two, and for fortune three, you get 100% chance of gravel dropping some flint. Fortune three increases the sapling drops from trees by 10% and the apples by 1%, but most interestingly, ores. Fortune one gives you a 33% chance to multiply the number of items dropped by two, so it will double the amount of redstone or it will double the amount of coal. 
Fortune 2 gives a 25% chance for it to double, but also a 25% chance for it to triple, making a 75% chance of getting more stuff overall. Fortune 3 is amazing. It has a 20% chance of doubling, 20% chance of tripling, and a 20% chance of quadrupling the amount of stuff that you can get, which is a 120% chance of getting more stuff. Every time with the Fortune 3, you get more stuff than you would if you're doing it with a normal pick. That is why you take it for diamonds. So we are going to put this to the test. We've got four sets of 12 diamond blocks, and I've got four efficiency five picks. One with no fortune on, one with fortune one, one with fortune two, and one with fortune three. I'm going to mine through these diamond blocks just to see how many diamonds I get from each. Now I'm going to put the diamonds in the chests and we're going to count them up at the end. Let's crack on. So we have finished. We mined out 12 diamonds and with a axe with no fortune on it unsurprisingly 12 because you get one diamond per ore block with fortune one we'd expect this to be about 33 percent more so that would make 12 would increase to something like 16 and we've got 18 which is actually not bad so we would increase that a little bit with fortune two We'd expect, if 12 is our baseline, we'd expect to get 75% increase, which is going up to around about 20-ish. 19, it's a little low. You'd be disappointed with that with Fortune 2, but sometimes that happens. Fortune 3, we'd expect 120% increase on that 12. So that's about 26 diamonds in here. And we actually got 30. That was an absolute result. A massive difference between none and Fortune 3. There you go, our first two potions and two enchantments. Make yourself faster and stronger with a potion and make yourself get loads more ores, etc. And also do it much quicker with those enchantments that are really specific to mining. Very, very useful. I'd consider those to be some of the things that you would look to get first in your Minecraft magic world. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to see you've enjoyed it and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.